Okay, hello, good morning. Um, welcome back to the second day of Innovate Heritage. Are we, are we ready? Yeah, good, okay, thank you. Um, welcome back. Uh, we're really excited about this um, next program that uh, was curated by Oriental Heritage Without Borders, which is the um, Syrian art and heritage in danger. And um, I will introduce the moderator now and um, uh, enjoy, thank you. Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to our panel, Syrian Art and Heritage in Danger. Uh, my name is Sapita Zarin Galam from Oriental Heritage Without Borders. Um, as you all know, uh, more than three years has passed uh, since the conflict started in Syria. Uh, during this time, and while the Syrian people uh, continue to suffer from one of the world's largest humanitarian crises, the country has further lost most and even still continue to lose more of its rich cultural heritage uh, on a daily basis, reaching to the point of no return, as mentioned by uh, UNESCO Director General uh, Irina Bokova last week. Even though from the very beginning, uh, various national and international institutions and even individual experts, they have uh, undertook some awareness raising activities towards addressing the, this critical issue. However, it's not until this year that UNESCO has taken its most practical act, uh, more than uh, mainly um, warning statements and meetings. Uh, I'm referring to the recent EU-funded project uh, entitled Emergency Safeguarding of the Syrian Heritage, which has encouragingly led to the proposal for the establishment of the International Observatory of Syrian Cultural Heritage in Lebanon, which seems to plan for more positive steps forward. On the other hand, uh, if one follows the creative activities of young Syrians, either artists or ordinary people, there has been no stop of artistic or cultural production all the way from the very beginning uh, when the conflict started despite all the difficulties. So such creative activity at these hard times together with the promising initiation of the UNESCO brings with it the message of hope which builds into this panel's uh, discussion topic towards the possibility of providing more opportunities for fostering and empowering the already existing potentials where with the help of artists and other innovative design professionals, there is a good chance in undertaking innovative and participatory cultural activities for restoring the social cohesion, community development, and protection of the endangered cultural heritage, both in form of tangible ones and intangible ones. As it has already been asserted, uh, the protection of cultural heritage uh, is inseparable from the protection of human lives. Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome and introduce to you our esteemed uh, guest panelists here who will provide you with their fascinating talks and discussions. Um, uh, Mahmoud Ramadan, uh, I will start with Mahmoud Ramadan. He is managing playmaker for community mobilization and strategic planning in Brussels. He's currently the strategic development coordinator of the Syria Initiative, responsible for the design and development of the initiatives, as, as well as building and strengthening the Peace Activities Network in Syria. He's supporting na national agenda for the future of Syria with United Nations for Economic and Social Development for Western Asia in a field of strategic local development. Um, our uh, second guest is Charlotte Bank. Uh, Bank. She is art historian, independent curator, uh, living and working between Berlin and Geneva. Uh, she was also uh, partly uh, based in Damascus till 2011. Her work is focused on modern and contemporary artistic practice from the Middle East with a special emphasis on the independent contemporary art scene since 2000 in its global context. Uh, she's a member of the curatorial team of the Visual Art Festival of Damascus. Uh, which is an independent art festival launched in 2010, uh, and now it exists as a nomadic platform for art artistic exchange. Um, and since 2013, uh, she's a member of a research project entitled 
other modernities, patrimony, and practices of visual expressions outside the West at the University of Geneva. And um, our last guest is Khaled Masher. He is a Syrian filmmaker. Uh, he's based in Berlin since 2012 and a recent directing student in the German Film and TV Academy of Berlin. He graduated from the Higher Institute of Theatrical Art in Damascus in 2007, and then after he studied, um, he studied film directing till 2011 in National Film, TV, and Theater School in Poland. Um, uh, for the beginning, uh, Mahmoud and Charlotte, they will start with their brief talks to give us a general view on what's going on Syria, uh, on this topic of Syrian art and heritage in danger, and then later we continue with questions and uh, discussions. Mahmoud, please. Thank you. Um, good morning. So it's not easy to compete with the sunny Saturday weather in Berlin, but thank you for being here. Uh, so um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and uh, talk about what's going on in Syria uh, in the cultural heritage and highlight that not only the culture of crisis, but also what's happened before that and what we expected also about the future. So the, the presentation doesn't uh, consistent with the text systematically, uh, but with the narrative as a whole. So it's just reflect um, how much I'm confused about the situation there. Please. Okay. Um, Syria today is the history of people who have participated in shaping culture and the human civilization for millennia. As the custodian of this rich heritage, we have all of us a responsibility to work on the recovery and maintain this living heritage, which is, which is still destroyed daily by violence. The international and Syrian cultural institutions that can act in this period as platform for cultural expression and further cultural innovation, wherever they are in Syria or outside Syria to help preserve Syrian identity as part of the today's world cultural heritage. In spite of institutional planning methodology and operational problems in the Syrian cultural policies, but Syria has firmly established itself as a cultural center in the Arab world. Music, cinema, TV industries, modern art, theater, festivals were evidence of the vibrancy and attractiveness of the Syrian culture in the region and around the world. But, but we have to admit too that is all these efforts have been failed to build continuing cultural scene in the rural and urban functionality in Syria. Also, the lack of integration between culture and development add obstac obstacles to discover cultural capital as well as community capital and invest them in the socio-economic consumption cycle to improve the quality of daily life for our communities. So, um, quick review for the characteristics of the scenes of the dominant culture, then the crisis culture, and the next possible scene will be introduced. Hope to let the continuous efforts of the in independent actors, independent institutions, as well as local authorities with a new role of Syrian state as catalyst instead of paternalistic one. That would make the cultural heritage as one of the entry points for local peace building in the near future. For many decades, public awareness of cultural heritage is uh, immature, and the old legal framework governing the space, the antiquities law, dates back to 1963. In addition to the central cultu cultural policies and delayed spatial development um, in the Syrian context, context besides the three years of violence, all are contributed to draw the ruptured scene today. Uh, the three years of crisis came to reach the Syrian cultural heritage to the point of no return that the last UNESCO meeting last week announced in Paris, as a victim of military conflict, actions and reactions destroying the past, 
present and loosen the hope of the future. Taking into account that 95% of the Syrians didn't engage with the violence directly, and Syria became a theater to settle the accumulated problems regionally and internationally. So what's about the challenges in the dominant culture? I'm, I'm gonna brief you, I mean, just because we have a little bit time uh, about the two scenes and then uh, come to the conclusion. So in Syria, culture were, weren't considered cornerstone of development process. Also the tangible heritage, fixed and movable, not linked with their communities. And intangible heritage began to discover itself too late, and it doesn't invest in the cultural capital. Example of that, the cultural mapping in um, the Crac de Chevalier uh, region, and they, they discovered a lot of potentials which is not used uh, in 2009. Uh, and you can notice always it's a project, but there is no clear methodology and approach uh, um, draw the scene in, in Syria. Uh, so um, other, other examples also they classified during the crisis, last, uh, um, last few months they finished to classify 100 items of Syrian intangible heritage. Two, so the characteristics of that period were, from my point of view, we succeed to square the circle between conservation and development once in rehabilitation project of the old city of Aleppo, um, which started as a rehabilitation project and turned to urban management project, using all the capital available in the old city. And that's the only clear example about how we deal with such a big uh, 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 culture heritage site. Um, the loss of present between the past and the future, that's one of our problem. So when the interpretation of the absence is domina dominated, we thinking in the present, the thinking of the, in the present will be absent. So during our work in the Syrian Museum and Heritage Site Network, one of the projects with the mu with Louvre Museum and other stakeholders in uh, Syria from civil society and from the government, we used, to, um, we used the Global Cafe uh, the real, in, in a real coffee shops in Latakia and Aleppo, just try to get a public mood about the cultural heritage, museums, identity, and values. So I'm gonna give you small examples. Question, if we assume that the museum is owned by the community, how does community express itself through the museum's activities and performances? Answer you should ask the officials, do they allow the community to participate in the museum activities? Then a lot of ideas will come out, the age 38 of the, uh, who is given the answer. Answer, let our ideas come out and you will see how the community will express itself, age 20. Question, during your visit to the museum, would you be experienced the past or the present? I don't see answer, I don't see the past or the present, only products of the past, no narrative. Question, who is the actor in the relationship between culture and people? Answer, the role is monopolized by the state while the society is still ineffective, age 67. Answer, so far state is a regulator while the role of the community as producer and regulator is still secondary role, age 38. Answer, people who should activate their culture and express, and express it, but you must give space for that, age 33. Okay, another point. The missing investment in the cultural capital as part of community capital in the development vehicle for local communities. We have also a good example between 23 villages in the eastern part of the country near a cultural heritage site, Urkish, dates back 4,000 years. Um, so 22 villages from the Kurds and one village from the Arab. And when we start working with them after a while, based on the capital available with them, just try to let them discover the impacts on how they can build their model in the development. After three months, I mean, they start produce together 
and they working hand by hand uh, and benefiting from being beside uh, uh, a cultural heritage site like Irkish. Creative visions, I mean, we, we, we had a creative visions, but always reluctant policy. So institutional structure, the, the reluctant policy, or the mechanism of decision making, or the funding, or the old legal framework, relation between public and civil sectors, also sometimes uh, obstacles with international cooperation. So the vision for, we have an example for the Syrian Museum and Cultural Heritage Site that's in 2010 and the edge of the crisis. And then the vision aimed to create world-class innovative and collaborative network of Syrian Museum and Cultural Heritage Site. So a network that will modernize, integrate, and expand upon the assets of Syria's 41 existing museums its historical old towns and rich collection of cultural heritage site. Um, it was assumed to include a new Syrian national museum, regional museum, site museums, virtual museums, and excellence centers. The network, it assumed to be greater than the sum of its institutions. It uh, provides visitors with comprehensive view of Syrian heritage and allow them to see connections between past and Syria's modern identity between culture and civil society, between history and the future, the museum in this network. Um, it was assumed to be living institutions providing a platform of cultural expression, performance, and educational act activities, and will be accessible to all Syrians, including those with dis disabilities, um, which have also strong links to other uh, re-owned world institutions through partnerships, traveling exhibitions, and exchange. And this vision was rely on local community development portals network based on heritage. Okay, what's about the crisis, culture of the crisis, the current scene? The culture of the crisis is the outcome of accumulative problems in historic phase. Mixed movement, revolution, war, civil war, um, alienation and modernity, originality and Salafist. A lot of changing in moral geography during the three years. Movement, revolution, militant movement, civil, civil war, war against terrorists, as well as the concept of people itself. From the people want to, they turn it to people as a victim of militant and political conflict. What's going on this period from my point of view one more time? So as they announced in the UNESCO meaning, I mean, they call it cultural hemorrhage. And if that's continuous, so no doubt we will reach the no, uh, no return point. And we will reach a cultural uh, cleansing. Okay, what's, what's going on also? Better late than never, the UNESCO will establish an observatory in Lebanon to, um, uh, to support uh, and control uh, the tangible and intangible Syrian heritage after three years. That's good also. So the activists and cultural initiatives, they are still working till now under the war, and you can find a hundred of initiatives in all Syrian cities. I mean, the people, they are working to continue living and preserve what they still have till now. So also from the state part, I mean, they took some preventive measurements to preserve the items of the museums, but only two muse museums were looted in Araqqa, in the eastern part, and in Ma'arat in Oman, it's, um, w w uh, which um, it has a lot of mosaics in this museum. It's between Idlib and Aleppo and beside other um, items from other uh, sites. So also we can look to that as part of the economy of the war and warlords got, in, got income uh, from heritage. So illegal ex excavations were done, museums as well as items were looted. So what's about the transformations of Syrian culture scene? 
Despite what appears as a big challenge in mobilizing cultural actors and building consensus on the priorities for actions in present and future, but 94% of the stakeholders who participated in the polls uh, about the priorities of the cultural actions in Syria, launched by Etijahat Institution, it's a Syrian institution, uh, independent uh, Syrian institution, in the context of the project towards a cultural policy promotes national democratic, democratic trans transition. The answer was yes to the question, do you see a need to coordinate a parallel cultural policy and action plans by independent cultural actors and co independent institutions in civil society? So all of them, I mean, they answered 94%, we need to do that. We need, we need to have a voice from the civil society in the, in the cultural heritage and in the cultural life in uh, Syria, especially during this time and um, more to come in the future. So what's about the characteristics or the thoughts came I mean, to my mind? Okay, I try to be a little bit positive, naive, but okay, in spite of the intangible cultural heritage, including cultural practices, performing arts, and more, we're also exposed to serious damage due to the social fragmentation, uh, displacement, and migration, but there is still a chance to benefit from acculturation in host communities and countries. There is still a chance to do that. With a lot of independent Syrians actors around the world, and they can preserve, and we can link always together to preserve the, the Syrian identity as part of the World Heritage Site. The role of cultural heritage in reconciliation inside and outside Syria for the Syrians, the social fabric rebuilding and physical reconstruction, building, building new cultural policy with a clear role for independent cultural activists and local authorities and strengthening the role of the independent actors and their ability to innovate. Penetrate in the central cultural system towards the decentralization of the culture, which is very important. And any kind of peace building will start, will start locally. I mean, otherwise, any other international or regional agreement will not bring the peace to uh, and there is a lot of examples around the world. So we have to prepare the ground. And the cultural heritage will be entry point to do that. The order, um, I'm uh, coming to the end. So the order of priorities, as they um, also based on the some polls, as, as I mentioned before, uh, from most important to least important to, the, uh, to be the initial results in the following form. I mean, they asked about the priorities for the independent uh, activists. Um, and the answer is like this. The use of culture as a pillar in the rebuilding of civil peace. That's number one. Then contribute to the treatment of the psychosocial effects occurring in the different groups of people in Syria. The use of culture as a tool in achieving the desired democratic transformation. The contrib to contribute to the culture in the expression of the tragedy and building its narrative. Heritage protection of tangible and intangible. The defense of culture as a right for every citizen. Mitigate the impact of the radical religious forces. The integration of culture in the relief efforts and the media. The use of culture as a factor of economic recovery. So finally, I mean, the hope is somewhere. We have to keep moving. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud Ramadan, for the very interesting talk. Uh, I invite uh, the next presenter, uh, Charlotte Bank. Thank you. Um, so. I would like to discuss some, way, some ways in which uh, the internet have been used uh, by artists and activists in Syria and how we can use these experiences in a, in a truly proactive way to raise awareness about endangered artistic heritage. So my focus will be more on the modern and contemporary artistic heritage and less on the 
architectural and archaeological um, heritage. So to start with, I would like to show a short extract from a video made in 2012 by a young Syrian artist, Randam Dah, uh, Light Horizon. <laughs> Maybe the computer has taken a day off as well. <laughs> I mean, who can blame it? <laughs> is it is it going to work, or should I just go go on and? Okay, then, then I need my PowerPoint. Um, that is also something. Uh, this is 68 no, to 63, so it should be sort of a drop-out. Yeah, yeah, why don't we do that? It's okay if you want to answer questions, but I need my, I mean, I need some I kind of visual. Yeah. I absolutely understand. I'm working on it. Okay. It shut itself down. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind um, doing a brief Q&A with this gentleman who has a question, yeah. I will have this up in approximate hours okay. so that question is completed. Okay. So maybe you guys can switch places. Yeah, yeah. okay. So if it's a difficult question, I will think about it. If it's OK, I can answer it. So please, no fear. But thank you for your very hopeful story of uh, oh. what might be. Hi, my name is uh, Jautam Sitzma. I work for a cultural managers exchange program based here in Berlin that includes quite a few uh, participants from the Arab Mediterranean region, including uh, uh, Syria. Um, thank you for your very hopeful story of what Syria looked like until 2010 and might go towards after the yeah, conflict has ended, whenever that may be. Um, can you say something about what's happening on the ground right now? I know that uh, El Itihad, for example, most of their staff are no longer located inside Syria. Most of them are in Beirut. They're officially registered now in Beirut. They're sitting in a uh, very uh, rotten apartment somewhere uh, <laughs> outside the city center. Um, they're, they, they're 
work is pretty much impossible. And I can imagine that for a lot of independent organizations working or that used to work in Syria, uh, one, it's quite impossible to work there right now, and two, they might have other things on their mind besides uh, preserving cultural heritage. Okay. So, um, <laughs> the question is can you say something about what it looks like on the ground right now? Okay. So, um, it depends where, because I mean, the crisis, it's not homogeneous in the whole Syrian regions. But if you would like, I mean, uh, in the hot spot like Aleppo or like uh, in the eastern part, it's really complicated, out of control. Um, but um, I would like to say that till now, there is a lot of networks from the Syrians, they are working uh, regardless the political positioning. And um, they are introducing services and implementing initiatives. And that what we, we, we try to support to build a critical mass later on from all parties for the peace building ground up. So, uh, for example, if you'll ask me about the old city of Aleppo, I will say nothing. I mean, it's very complicated situation right now. Uh, while I can say that, as I mentioned, so in the cultural heritage, they j just finished like these classified 100 um, um, elements in intangible heritage. Uh, they are uh, right now preparing uh, something related to the Crac de Chevalier, uh, Crac de Chevalier uh, Citadel, uh, after um, the government took it again. So, again, I mean, uh, in the culture in general, there is some initiative related to the active citizenship. There is um, uh, another humanitarian uh, initiatives. Uh, we are working right now with the different parties to establish the uh, cultural networks also to start um, working uh, about the cultural heritage in different regions. That's in, ge in general what's, what's going on. A lot of local dialogues also taking place uh, in different thematic uh, uh, discussion. Uh, part of it related to the cultural heritage, part of it related to the youth problems, part of it related to the education, uh, decentralization, uh, so all these urban functionality, uh, how could be the, the local services also an entry point to let the, the communities like, living together and working together again? That's, that's in general what I have. Uh, I don't know if you need more specific things, so uh, please. Um, That's right. Um, I know that to actually do something on the ground is impossible. Indeed, indeed. Um, one more time, when we when we say it's it's impossible. Can you repeat the question because uh, the audience who's on online can't hear you and he's not talking in the microphone, so just repeat the question. Okay. Um, so, I, the the question is, uh, you know, that the working uh, on the ground right now it's uh, impossible. They asked me to to repeat the the question. That's right, because most of the uh, artists are outside of Syria. Yes and no here. Yes, a lot of them outside Syria, but they're still inside Syria. For example, last month, the festival for the short films in Aleppo was taking place. Uh, uh, so um, uh, another activities in Damascus uh, also. Um, um, in theater. Uh, and also in a opera house. So I can say yes and no. It's not the normal cultural life, yeah. But again, I, I will say the opportunity that right now we are talking about the present, finally, because always stuck either looking to the past or talking about the hope and the future. So 
That's what is going on. Also, the jazz festival, uh, uh, part of it took place in Beirut uh, f uh, with the children from refugees. Uh, and it was screening, screening also between The Hague and Beirut and Amman. So, I mean, and maybe also, I don't know, Khalid or can also comment about that if there is any activities is taking place, but that's what I uh, know right now. Also, there is two exhibition here uh, in the exhibition. Two Syrians, I guess, were exhibited. The Angelique Sanusian, Muharramat, and the uh, and Tamam Azam too. So that's what I'm talking about. We have to let them link always, okay? Thank you. Is it ready? No? Okay. Another question? You mean that it, it was a complicated question? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, sorry, because I mean, we are online and then it works? Yeah, okay. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, I, I saw the life and the situation of the uh, city center and the around the area. What about the rural area? Uh, do you have the, I, I, as I know about the, you have lots of adobe house and mud structures along, I mean, uh, all around the Syria, and, and, and it is also enlisted part of the UNESCO heritage site. So what about those areas? Has, has it is been really protected or not, or something like that? Or the, Sir or the rural areas, which does have the intangible, intangible cultural heritage? Okay. What's the matter of those things? Uh, okay. Just in brief, if I wish to Okay. Uh, again, as I mentioned, I mean, it's not a homogeneous crisis all around Syria. And then there is part of the rural area, for example, in the rural Alep Aleppo, the dead cities. That's a World Heritage Site. Sibam, Sibam is uh, in Syria? Sibam city or something like that. It's a mud city. It's a big, yeah. big yeah. Sibam. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sibam. What? Shibam. Shibam, no, that's in Yemen. Yemen, that is in Yemen. No, 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 I'm talking about yes. something else, about the dead cities in, 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 in the rural uh, area of Aleppo. I mean, so that's what I mentioned. Part, there is illegal excavations uh, was taking place there. Uh, and uh, all these things documented because there is a lot of um, virtual platform um, uh, let the local communities publish if there is any um, anything, any destruction or any other thing happened. So they photograph that and they uh, produce it. And the, the archive is there. And also there is a report from the uh, Antiquities Directorate about all the uh, destruction and all the problems in the cultural heritage. W uh, also, in, uh, as I mentioned, Crac de Chevalier or Afamia Citadel or, so there is different places where um, a theater for fighting, unfortunately. If you look also to old city of Aleppo, so it's unbelievable, old city of Homs, to Busra. Busra also, the old city of Busra is the World Heritage Site. All, uh, so a lot of problems there. Ready? So, okay, it looks like the computer has finally decided to stay away, and uh, I will just, um, I will change my talk uh, and just be very brief, because most of what I was going to say, I would need the images uh, for it. Is it? <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> I apologize for the issue.
Okay. Let's hope it stays there. <laughs> um, okay, I was uh, I was going to show you a brief video uh, or a brief extract from a video uh, that which is one you can find uh, online. So if anybody's interested, please ask me afterwards for for the name of the artist. Um, it's a video that shows a young woman doing her daily household work in a quite alienating setting. It's uh, staged in a ruined house. It was actually filmed in the Syrian Julan, which is, uh, as you know, uh, occupied uh, since uh, 1967. And uh, many villages were destroyed and left in the state of destruction. But what is interesting about the, uh, the video is that this situation, although it has a very specific geographical and uh, historical situation, could actually now be located anywhere, all over in Syria. Everywhere in Syria, people are trying to make their lives, remake their lives in the middle of ruins, in the middle of, of real ruins, of ruined houses, but also in their ruins, in the ruins of their former existences. <laughs> Um, another example of uh, how ruins have found their way into to the works of a Syrian artists is uh, in the images of Tamam Azam that you can see in the exhibition, where we witness a series of iconic examples of European modern art history in the middle of the ruins of Syrian cities. What works such as Madas and Azam seem to convey is on one hand a will to continue to live even among ruins, a strong sense of resistance that life is stronger than any effort to destroy it, and that art will live on no matter, and what, no matter what the circumstances are. At the same time, Azam's Photoshop series also seemed to invite the world into, the, into Syrian ruins, notably through some of its major artworks, artworks that celebrate life, like here we have Matisse dancers and uh, Klimt the Kiss. The world has largely to chosen to look away from what is happening in Syria, but Azam will not let it get away with it, it seems to say. He takes its images and put them into the Syrian context, more precisely in the context of the ruins of Syrian cities which held many priceless examples of architecture that have now been lost forever. So after Tamam Azam had published his series on the internet, they soon went viral and were widely shared, and maybe this series has opened more eyes to the dangers, to the dangers that are facing Syria's heritage than many alarming reports from UNESCO and other organizations would have done. The question is, what can we learn from this and how can we use it? This is something I will elaborate a little bit uh, later on. Now the internet has been very important uh, in the context of the Syrian uprising, both uh, in terms uh, of calling for actions, calling for strikes, calling for demonstrations, but also to demonstrate, to, to document actions made by uh, civil, civil society activists and, and uh, demonstrators. So one example I will just show here, which is a, a very early example from, one, from a street action that was staged in Damascus in 2011, where a group of activists poured red color into, into the fountains in Damascus to symbolize the, the, the bloodshed that, were, that was taken, taking place. Um, the internet has been used also for a series of, uh, of short videos uh, made by uh, a series of Syrian young artists that showed solidarity with, uh, with the peaceful goals of the uprising and condemned violence. One of the first ones was uh, uh, Conte de Printemps, by Mohamed Omran and Dani Abu Loh that was published in uh, autumn 2011 and actually was the first in a series of 
similar videos that used found footage together with animation, together with, uh, with uh, new footage, and created some short videos that commented on, on the events as uh, they were unfolding. Um, the internet has also been used for more humoristic comments in the early days of the uprising, for instance, when the leaks of uh, some of the private emails between uh, Bashar al-Assad and his wife uh, were published, uh, in which she called him Bata, that is the duck. Uh, comments on this nickname of uh, Bashar al-Assad were were quite common on the internet for for a brief period of time. So on on the on the left you see an, a manipulation of of uh, a declaration of allegiance. It said uh, the image says we love you, and his face has been uh, changed with the with the head of a duck. Uh, on your right side, you have uh, manipulation of a small, of a, of a children's book's uh, illustration, and the kid asks the duck, uh, that is, uh, are you, are you, uh, are you a, uh, a duck? And the duck says, la Assad, which means, no, I'm a lion. So Assad, it's a play on the, on the name of, uh, of Assad, which means lion. Now, of course, the internet now is not really used in this humoristic way. The situation in, in Syria has become too, uh, too violent and too disastrous to, uh, to these kinds of, of uh, plays. Um, so I would like to, to return to the images of, uh, now it doesn't seem to like to want to go backwards and it doesn't like to go forward either. Oh, okay. So, so let's get back to the to the images of uh, of Tamam Azam. Now, this stunning appearance of uh, European icons of modern art in the ruins of uh, of Syria leads me to question the place of art in war zones or in zones of crisis. Just as humans and just as architecture and archaeological sites, paintings, sculptures, and film copies are in danger. And uh, I will turn to a more um, dramatic incident. Um, if we go back to 2003, uh, when the US forces were uh, entering the city of Baghdad, Images of the looted National Museum and burnt National Library went around the world. But another tragedy was actually taking place that mostly went unnoticed. The Museum of Modern Art suffered a similar fate. It was broken into and its collection was, to, collection was looted. And contrary to the holdings of the National Museum, Many of the works of uh, the Modern Art Museum remains without a trace, and it has unfortunately not received a very wide um, audience. So when we talk about the threat to heritage, I think it's important, whether we're talking about it in Syria or in Iraq or anywhere else, I think it's important to remember that heritage, cultural heritage, is also the more recent heritage. It's the recent artistic history of a country, its paintings, its sculptures, its film copies, the production of, of uh, contemporary artists that are also in danger. In, sim in Syria, maybe not now, but I think there might be a similar risk as in, in, uh, in Iraq. Since its inauguration in 1952, the Ministry of Culture has been collecting works by Syrian artists. The National Museum in Damascus, but also the one in Aleppo, had display rooms with modern paintings together with the collections of antiquities, which were much more famous. Also, the storage uh, facilities of the Museum of Modern Art in Dumar, outside Damascus, which is a little bit a strange institution that never really started functioning properly. Other works are located there. And these collections are also potentially in danger for many reasons. 
They are, of course, in danger of destruction and looting. Should Damascus, the one in Aleppo is, in fact, in danger, but still uh, the, the, the people working in the, in the National Museum in Aleppo have already taken measures to, to uh, safeguard the collections. But the one in Damascus would potentially be in danger should Damascus become di directly involved in the fighting. One other danger is that these collections are usually quite poorly catalogued, and therefore they are vulnerable in situations of lawlessness. Another example uh, is uh, the question of the cinematographic legacy. The archives of the National Film Organization in Damascus holds a collection of fine films produced since the 1970s, exceptional films by Syrian filmmakers, but also by filmmakers from other Arab countries. Like I would just like to show you a few examples. Uh, the Egyptian film director Taufik Saleh's The Dupes from 1972, which was made by a, from a novel by the Pal Palestinian author Hassan Kanafani. Also the Lebanese filmmaker Burhan Alawi's Kafar Qasim from 1975. And among the many Syrian films, I would just like to mention one example, Mohammed Malas's Dreams of the City from 1983, because this film in particular stands out as an example of the devastating conservation conditions in the National Film Organization in Damascus. Now, the copy that is held by the National Film Organization is in a very bad condition, and since it is maybe the only one that is locatable at the moment. Maybe one, one copy will turn up at some point, but uh, the one that is in the National Film Organization is, as far as I know, the only one which, is, uh, which exists, is so badly damaged that the film cannot be properly shown. Now, these conditions were bad already before the uprising, but they have not become any better. It is due to a lack of competence, a lack of interest, but now this, these, uh, these factors have deteriorated considerably. To these more official archives come the many cases of artists who have had to leave their studios and personal archives as well as works behind when they had to leave the country during the violence and who are now unsure of and, if, uh, and, and when uh, if they will ever be able to return to Syria. So while these examples of modern and contemporary artistic heritage might be in a less acute danger than the archaeological and architectural heritage, I think it's important to bring up the issue and to raise the awareness of this part of Syrian heritage that should also be safeguarded for future generations. And here I think the internet can be of help. And this is where I'm coming back to my point in the beginning. There is one example that might serve as an inspiration. After the looting of Baghdad's uh, Museum of Modern Art, the American Iraqi art historian Nada Shaboud started a project that attempted to recreate the museum in a virtual way, creating an online museum. She wanted to collect images of the artworks taken by private people visitors to the museums, relatives of artists, the artists themselves, etc., and she wanted to, re to create an online archive of the works known to have been in the museum's collection. Such an archive could have proven a valuable tool against black market dealings and would also have been an important research tool as well as a way to recognize ir Iraqi modern art which had known years of flowering with lively discussions about the role of art in society and also seeing the founding of different art movements. For unknown reasons, this project was never realized other than in rudimentary ways, and the Museum of Modern Art in Baghdad actually reopened last year, but a large part of its former collection is still missing. So the idea of using the internet and create a platform for awareness raising through a collaboration with the general audience seems to me an idea one could develop. And I think with the use of the internet as we have seen it in the, since the beginning of the Syrian uprising, this could be a way of, of uh, developing a platform for interaction. And also I think uh, Mahmoud made a very important point that 
the, the culture, the art and culture scene in Syria maybe has missed or didn't really think one point to the end, and that was how to reconnect with the more general uh, public, with other regions in Syria, other than the uh, culturally interested, culturally and artistically interested elites in the cities. So maybe we could imagine a platform uh, on the internet with an archive of images combined with the possibility of exchange and comments. To ask people, to ask artists to, 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 to upload their, their images of the works they had had to leave behind them, to ask visitors to museums to, to, and to, to architectural and, and archaeological sites to, to contribute to this development of, a, of an, an online platform, an online museum, a virtual museum of Syrian ancient, modern, and contemporary artistic and cultural heritage. So it could be one way that uh, to, to uh, safeguard and also to raise awareness. And as I was mentioning, in the case of looted, of, of looted objects and of looted works of art, these kind of archives that are widely accessible can actually really prevent uh, their being trafficked, uh, trafficked. OK, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, uh, to speak more about the art scene in Syria before the, the events happened and after the events happened, and how this events like affected the the artist works, and how they uh, and actually despite uh, despite all the crisis which was happening in the humanitarian levels. <coughs> and all the other levels, uh, I think <laughs> I think actually, uh, really, uh, there is a lot of positive things which uh, um, happened to the mentality of Syrian artists and their production because of these events, despite all, all the crises and uh, the other uh, disasters happened. Like, because before it was really uh, schizophrenic, I think, the art scene in Syria. And uh, <clears throat> like me as an artist, young artist or a person who was trying to, to start up with his artworks, uh, there were a lot of lack of like support from, for example, for the state let's say, for the, for the art scene and the culture scene in all the dimension in theater and films, in, in, in all, all the fields of art. And that's one, one factor. But also, uh, in the history in Syria, there were like uh, Abu Khalil Qabbani, and he was uh, the first uh, one who tried to establish ac actually a theater in Damascus, and he got so popular that people bring their uh, mattresses, actually, and go and wait one whole night to get into the performance. And this certain guy, he, he has his theater burned by radical Islamists. And that was in 1890-something. Uh, and this sample is not just to, uh, like, just to tell what my opinion that the, the the obstacles of the culture we were facing is 
is definitely, I mean, you all the time put the first responsibility on the authority because they actually have the access to solve this kind of problem or, or something. But that didn't mean I think it's so flat also to think that this is the only factor. There is a really a deep discussion about what is the obstacle of, of really an active culture and art life in Syria, which make uh, someone like me need to travel to other countries to, to gain something which is, I wasn't able actually uh, to gain in Syria. Uh, what happened <coughs> uh, as an Evans, late, latest Evans, it, it pushed the artist to, to stuck to reality and to, uh, to actually deal with reality. Before, before it was so schizophrenic, it was like, let's say, um, rarely you can actually speak about uh, problems which actually really affecting your personal life. You have, you have a space of talking about things. Actually, there is also a freedom space about political critics and stuff. But you, you are really, it's so hard to speak about the ground and the reason. You can describe the horror, but if you want to think and analyze and put your ha hand in the point, then you are in a risk from, first from the state, as they're, they're also like super radical, political perspective, which I think now they are rethinking about this because this is, this is what, what make the huge explosion, you know, somehow. It's like this both sides, super radical uh, perspective, you know, how they see the, the issues and how it, it became the solution one should erase the other, wh wherever who, and there is no common ground at all for, for, for anything. It's a clash in the identity, actually, the Syrian identity. I see it as Syrians now, yeah, they are in this geographic frame, but it is actually, I think we are really having a, a huge dilemma of who we are actually as a Syrian. And, and this is a, a main basic of actually, of a lot of further on detail conflicts happening here and there, uh, et cetera. Uh, I think one of the most valuable uh, things happen lately was the mobile videos upload. Because for me, it's, it has an, in, in, is a really big value because it is, for me, art, personally, all its value comes from make me understand the reality more or like get more in touch with the reality. And for me, all the time art come bring its values from reality. And that's why in that certain moment where, uh, during the crisis and what the people were doing, it wa they were forced, like people, they never used any te technology, they never used any camera, they are super amateur, they use like the very simple cameras, you know, on their mobiles to, to capture, uh, it's like the latest sometimes defense about a situation, the, it's the latest thing they can do is just to evidence what actually their reality and what actually they are uh, practicing. These images is the, it is the, the most, uh, you know, innocent picture we can see of Syria, more than any of the artists' work, absolutely, which make us really understand those Syrians and understand what, what the hell they are passing through and what is, their lives look like, what does their houses look like, what furnitures they have, how the fridge fill with what. And that's really important to understand also those people more than to understand, you know, also the cultural background and also like just also the very basic reality they are living in and which, which push them to, which we can understand why they took some radical choices like we've We've got a Salafis in Syria, which is a country that has a lot of diver diversity now. We have also a radical nationalists on the other side. It develops. Uh, so for me, really, um, I think I'm criti uh, critical a little bit uh, about most of the artwork was produced uh, during the events from the Syrian artists because of, uh, maybe because of the shock Usually it was very overwhelming events, nobody expected. So in some point you are really, you need time to think. And maybe the first thing you just describe, the horror, describe the, 
the things we are facing, but um, I think this is not enough for art. I think that I need to know why all nations has conflicts, was, why it was so brutal in Syria that much. Why? That's the question which, which those mobile videos sometimes answer me more than artworks. Until now, maybe it needs a bit more time until we can digest what actually happened and start thinking about, about actually the reason, because when we don't know the reason, we will never solve the problem somehow. Until now, yeah, we are blaming each others, but we are finally in one frame and uh, we need to find, you know, somehow a kind of solution between each others. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to take so long. I would like just to leave any space for, for your questions, if any. And, and I would like to thank also Mahmoud and Charlotte because they give really a very rich, I think, introduction about the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Khaled. You actually um, answered my first question. Uh, I wanted to ask you about what's going on at the moment, as one can follow in a social network that a lot is going on. Uh, so you give us an overview on it. Um, uh, um, because of the technical problem, we have really limited time to discuss, so I have um, one or two questions from uh, uh, each of the presenters, and then I open this to the audience. Um, I want to start from Charlotte. Uh, thank you for the presentation, and uh, you, had, you came uh, to this very nice uh, proposal for having an online platform, uh, taking the example from the Iraqi case. Uh, my question is how this um, platform looks like. Is it like an open, all-inclusive uh, uh, platform? Is it institutional? How is it going to work? Who is going to be responsible for it? Uh, which institutions? Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good question. I mean, this platform exists more in, in my imagination. It's, uh, it's just an idea I wanted to, to bring out because I'm a little bit worried, as I said, about the, the, this particular part of Syrian heritage that I really see in, uh, in, in, in danger. And there is not really much focus, there's not much talk about it. There is a lot more focus on, on, the, uh, on the archaeological heritage. Um, so my, my idea would be that it would be as open as possible not not restricted i mean it will it would have to be moderated in a way or another but it should really be something that was easily accessible for people who are not familiar with art institutions and and so on so i would prefer it not to be overwhelmed by by th theoretical discussions but more more image oriented as accessible to to everybody anybody who had who has an image uh, of a particular site, of a particular artwork, also the artists themselves could put their images on this site. And my idea would really be like it would be very open, very accessible. Somebody would need to set it up. I'm no expert in it, so it's, uh, I can't really do it. Actually, the same question I have from you on, on the uh, suggestion of Charlotte, this online platform. You are a community development expert, uh, initiation development. So what do you think about this proposal and um, about the stakeholders, the people, or um, uh, also integration of this, uh, this idea into um, what UNESCO hopefully will start to do in Lebanon? Um, uh, what are your suggestions for, uh, for promoting this, this proposal? What do you think about it? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, so I guess it's a, it's a very good idea. And uh, the crucial things that leave it, um, the, the, on the public ownership of the initiative uh, with other uh, stakeholders, uh, that's one of keep it an open platform, that's another uh, point. And uh, I guess it's not under the umbrella of 
directly under the umbrella of the observatory right now, at least, I mean, uh, try to um, keep on the momentum of the independent uh, actors and independent institutions, uh, Syrian or other international institutions dealing with that. Um, and then after that, maybe you can link with the others or get some support technically or funding or uh, other kind of. Uh, so just uh, uh, also, um, I think that's a good exercise uh, to do a mapping through the social media, what's going on, because maybe there is also another initiative. Uh, you can build on the impact of this initiative. I'm not saying, or merge many initiatives together with a new platform. So that could be also uh, an option. Uh, yeah, also inside Syria, there's many initiatives. Uh, you can try to uh, link together uh, about that. Khaled, um, again, in line with the, with the same proposal, what the, how do you think, um, what do you think about it? How realistic uh, is this uh, proposal at the time? Um, is it possible to, to gather all these artists uh, uh, with very diverse um, uh, directions that they are working uh, under one umbrella um, or not? Um, I don't know how much we need that, but okay. I think it's possible. Um, um, I mean, artists now is forced to gather it somehow because they are like mostly they are independent, they have their own fund, and now everybody is individual. It used to be actually like the most ar interesting artwork from Syria is by me is made by independent artists and most of them, even if they co cooperated with some organization like the Cinema Institute, for example, in Syria, they, they finance actually a uh, few films, which is still until now censorships in Syria, but it's produced by the state somehow. And that's, I respect somehow s something about it, like which is, you know, uh, there is like an effort like for financing such an expensive art production like filmmaking but uh, now I think there's no other choice than really as also Mahmoud mentioned like there should be like also a civil uh, like a civil efforts to to actually make create some platforms where people can gather together and do something instead of staying as individuals and that's no skip out of it I think for the Syrian situation especially under the lack of support from the state and also there is a lot of uh, also support for opposition comes for political agendas uh, which is also to support other agendas somehow and the, the, the only solution is like really Syrian sit together and do things which is, they think is right for the country because I don't think, you know, the external support is all the time going to the, to the good things for the Syrian people sometimes is just for, for the good of their agenda somehow. It's finally a money. In, in Syria, like one of the most developed sector in art was the TV production. But that's, I don't call it a culture, cultural element. It's, it's, it's seriously, it was just a business. It's like uh, oil money. It was, it's so schizophrenic of like actually uh, exposing something about Syrian. Uh, but it was actually like contain a huge amount of actor workers and a lot of money income. And that was very good uh, for, for the Syrian artists who work in theater and stay hungry the whole year. And uh, so they were like actually an income for them to, to stay alive and keep doing what they want to do and not work as a taxi drivers after the rehearsals or something. So I, I really believe there is no other solution except to having creating such platforms in a really civil independent way out, out of any 
uh, external uh, agendas or something. Um, one question for Mahmoud. You showed the, the, this. Oh, okay. So, just just one one question and okay. <laughs> you showed you showed this this light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, even though showing also this very complicated situation of the Syria. Um, the question is, um, how is it possible to integrate and involve artists and artworks within community development activities or for uh, any, any works which will end uh, um, for, um, for works for social cohesion, for, for whatever you always uh, talking about? Uh, where do you see artists and artworks? So as, um, as I mentioned before, I mean, um, definitely that will be one of the entry points to, to build a local uh, peace in, in the Syrian uh, society. Uh, and it, during my follow-up, in the social media or in some local dialogues, in the social media, uh, we did exercise on a monthly basis about um, uh, uh, analysis of the social media in, in the Syrian society, try to follow up and do these analysis. And also you will be surprised that not all the Syrian talking about um, uh, the violence and the conflict. I mean, 60% uh, of them, they are talking about uh, new chances and life and culture. And regardless of the political positions, they are still negotiate about music, about uh, uh, theater, uh, uh, um, about a lot of uh, artistic work. Uh, I met, I visited uh, most of the um, exhibitions in Beirut. Whenever I'm there, there is a Syrian um, uh, artist uh, doing exhibition. And I met there from all uh, parties, and they are discussion, they are talking, so that's one of it. Also, uh, during our work with community development and during the crisis, the interactive theater, for example, it was one of the exercises they are doing always to talk and discuss about what's going on and putting solution. So there is different expressions could be uh, out of, and also the remedy uh, using the, the, the painting or using uh, for the uh, psychosocial or, or with the children and uh, uh, with other uh, Syrian uh, infected groups. Thank you. To, do we have time for, okay, yeah. Actually, I think there, there are two things that are very, very interesting. Um, bef before the uprising, uh, let's say in the mid, since the mid, 2000s, uh, a very interesting independent film movement actually started in Syria uh, with young filmmakers uh, working in experimental documentary formats uh, who were really very committed to society and to address problems in society. Many of these films were problematic in the sense that they could not be screened in Syria. Uh, also, uh, there was a lack of opportunities for screening such works until Dog's Box, the, film, the festival, started uh, and unfortunately had to stop before it was really allowed to develop into a, a really big festival. There was also the, the project of uh, Omar Abu Sade who did the, who did a series of interactive uh, plays addressing, taking, involving the audiences in uh, different theater plays uh, that addressed different problems of, of Syrian society. So there was something going on that uh, I think is worth connecting to and, and keep keeping in mind. And, and so th there is something to, um, to build upon. Also, sorry, last point. Uh, uh, also, Khalid mentioned also the change of the public space and uh, the change of notion of audiences and the producers of the art and culture. I mean, it's a lot changed during the crisis, and it's more towards the public space more than 
the classical way of uh, introducing and producing uh, the culture. Thank you. Um, I think, yeah, we don't have time, more time to discuss this. Maybe during the break we can uh, talk more and ask your question uh, from our uh, presenters here. Um, I don't know if it's possible. I wanted for, uh, for the closing of this panel to show it to you. No, it's not possible? <laughs> okay. Okay. So I just invite you to, in case you haven't seen the exhibition, uh, just go back in a break to, to see it, to see the work of two Syrian artists, Hamma Mazam and Angelic Zanusian. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> So I just want